going to have an analysis of the name of what's happening. I has an excellent site called as the real news network dot com. Uh, it, 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 it's hosted in the United States and uh, uh, you know uh, it's a very very excellent site, uh, excellent news analysis. It's not news; it's analysis of the news. So they have videos uploaded every now and then. Uh, so I, I yes yes the real news network dot com. You can check it out right now uh, to see. It's an excellent site and we'll get a lot of information from there. And uh, as you guys all know, we follow Robert Pitt from the Independent. I follow him. He gives a very, uh, for being an honest and he gives a very uh, knowledgeable view on the Middle East and what happens out there. You know, uh, so if you, you go to the paper called as uh, the independent.co.uk. I guess the people from the UK must be knowing him. He's called, his, he's called Mr. Robert Sis. And he has a beautiful documentary. Uh, I just don't recollect uh, that it was aired on Discovery Channel. Hold on. I just check out if I have this. If I have. Uh, I have to tell you guys this. You have to watch this documentary. It's excellent. You know, to the eyes of Western journalists, what, how the video that is done. Okay, hold on. I have it with me. I need to come there with me for a second. Um, okay, if at all I do find it uh, within my talk, I'll just... Uh, let me see. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm not finding it right now. But if you go to Robert Chase, or if you type in uh, Google Ro Robert Chase uh, documentary, I think uh, you all should be able to find it. It's an excellent documentary. Uh, if you all find it, please watch it. It's excellent. Uh, so coming back to uh, the... Hold on. Okay, coming back to uh, what I was speaking and what that means. You know, uh, you find the most of the shirk and liba being practiced in India concentrated in the state of Kashmir, and here calls for establishment of Sharia state over there. So they say that we want independence from India, and say, "Wow, people, you want independence from India, and where do you want to go? Do you want to have a constitution of your own?" Like what Pakistan did, you know, it separated and it formed its own constitution. It did not take the constitution of Allah. You know, it did not take. It had its own penal code. You know, it's not. It's not. It's not following Sharia. Do you want to become a Pakistan? I am not against Pakistan. I am against the system that they are following right now. If, if, you, take, if you call yourself as a Muslim country, you are supposed to follow the Sharia, right? I mean, that's, that's what I understand from Islam. That's what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. And that's what the Kaaba Ikram did. And that's what the Kaaba and Kaaba Kaaba and all the Khalifas did. I'm not saying that you establish a Khalifa, but you at least establish a state wherein Sharia is followed. Inshallah, Khalifa will come. Yeah. You have a Khalifa. But you at least have states who follow Sharia in all aspects. Even Saudi Arabia does not follow Sharia in all aspects. You know? It's a shame. It, you know, in all aspects of government, 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 they do not follow the Sharia. And, uh, you know, so I do not hear the people in Kashmir asking for an Islamic state. I do not hear the people in Kashmir asking for, asking to be ruled by Sharia. I do not have demonstrations in Kashmir. They only say, I love Kashmir, I love Kashmir, nobody says Sharia. And it's so strange, I see people in the streets of UK saying we want Sharia. <laughs> it's strange, man. People in Kashmir who are fighting for so long I want to have independence are not asking for Sharia, but you have people in the UK of all the places shouting for Sharia in the streets. Alhamdulillah, subhanAllah. I mean, it's like, you know, it makes sense to me, really. So, and the same problem you have, you know, so, so this is the problem people say to people in Kashmir, inshallah, if, 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 if they want freedom, if they want freedom from India, if they think that they are not being ruled properly, if they think that they want to break away, you know, and form their own country, fine. 
But if you want to form your own country, then you are supposed to follow, you know, you are supposed to follow, if you want to become an Islam, if you are if if fighting in the name of Islam, you know, then listen, you know, people listen. If you are fighting in the name of Islam, you are fighting and dying for Islam, you need to be fighting and dying that when you get, when you get a state, then you rule it according to Islam. You fight for Islam and you fight, you know, and you die for Islam and when you get what you are fighting for and dying for, you know, you make a constitution drafted by people in this world and you run your country according to a constitution which was made by people, not made by Allah and His Rasul That's what they live in Pakistan, man. We got the country and what did they do? Mena man, sorry if you think that you know, I am against in Pakistan. I am not being against Pakistan, I am against the system that the Pakistan is now following. If you don't really call yourself as a Muslim country, then follow the Sharia. I mean, that's what a Muslim country is called. Muslim country is not a country where Muslims are in majority and non-Muslims are in minority. I am not talking in that sense. I am talking about Muslim country is a country which follows the Sharia, the rules of Allah and the rules of Allah. So, you know, this is what the people should ask for in Kashmir. If you ask what Allah wants you to be doing, He will grant it to you. If you ask for other things in life, if you ask for freedom, 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 freedom from the soldiers, huh? if you ask for that, He is not going to give you that. I mean, He doesn't want you, He doesn't want to give you that because it's been so long you are fighting and, you know, there seems, there seems to be no way that you are going to get that. No way. I do not see any way that India is going to give you the freedom if you are fighting for that. No way. You know, I think if, if you don't want that, I think it's better that you are you stop fighting at all. You know, you are stop fighting. You will stop fighting in the name of Islam. You just, just fight in the name of something else, man. You don't fight in the name of Islam. Don't, don't degrade Islam by saying you are fighting and dying for Allah. But we do not want to welcome the Sharia state. I have not heard calls from Kashmir for this. Or it's not I have not heard any of my friends in Kashmir talking about it, you know, or, or you know, in the media, I don't know, but they don't bring it, no. I have never heard a report in the media, you know, that uh, talks about a Sharia state being established in the state of Kashmir. They only talk of freedom and independence. From what? You know, the same thing that happened in Bethlehem, eh? you know, before all these people, all the people, all the brothers from all over the world, they went and fought, and they won the war. And when the uh, time for establishing of Sharia came, that I am talking from the report from the independent newspaper, and we say, I don't know as far as they are true because I have never been to Sharia, yeah? if people can correct me, they can. You know, people did not want to follow the Sharia. They started enjoying themselves, wow, we are free from the Russian, and wow, oh, yeah, it has Volta, no problem, man, okay, fine, and you know. So what happened? Two years later, the Russian army came and they are free. What are they doing? What the, the, the whole resistance is in Campbell right now. They're just blowing up people on the train. I don't know if they did, but you know, that's how the nature of the insurgency is. It's nothing now. They drove out the most, one of the most powerful armies in the world and they started enjoying themselves and one now. In two years' time, they were packed off. Finish. You don't want the Sharia? Allah says, you don't want to rule according to how I have want, I want you all to be ruled. I replace you with other people. I replace you. I replace you with other people. You don't want to do my job. You don't want to. You don't want to establish Sharia on the earth. And I made all the rulers, right? I made all defeat the most one of the most powerful armies in the world, right? And you don't want to follow the Sharia. Forget you. Get lost. Somebody else in your place. Directions come back. Two years. Right to the back. This world is happy. People don't, they are fighting, fighting in the name of Islam. Some brothers who are fighting hungry, they have become, nah, they have become Shaheed, they are getting the reward. But, you know, what were they fighting for? The people didn't want Sharia. They started in young after the Russians left. See, what is it? Rubbish. You know? And this is the same thing that happened in Kashmir. People don't want Sharia. So, why is God, will, you know, why is Allah going to give them, you know, victory and all that. Allah will only give you victory if you are going to establish his deal on this earth. Why are you going to give you victory otherwise? For what? So you are disobeying him? You don't, you don't follow his deal? You will do shirk and bidha more freely after the Indian deal? What? No? This is the question that you need to ask. People will be only say the Pakistan is, you know, my brother, uh, what do you say, Bena and all these people, people in India, Muslims in India, Hindus in India, everybody else in the world, they say, you know, 
कशी होती तुला बीस इंडिया डंडी संडा डंडी संडा ब्लैक बैट एंड सेंटर
So it's not the important part. It's still they should be side by side. But what is what should gain prominence is our brothers and sisters of Kashmir are doing shit, and that should be the focal point. People are more concerned about their freedom, but they're not concerned about the brothers and sisters dying every now and then committing shit. They all go to hell for it. If they do shit, they die. Allah, Allah, Allah knows that shit. You know. So what is it? Okay, let's see. You can click the bell button and the remoter is covered. Any of these utilities contain coding. You are sharing the same as me. Okay, good. Thank you. So, so this is what is more important, and you know we should be focusing on that rather than you know we are praying say okay, oh Allah swt, and we are praying oh Allah, oh Allah swt. Uh, you know, give the people of Kashmir freedom. You say, oh, that's one dollar. Give the people of Kashmir freedom from shit first. Then, inshallah, uh, you know, they will get freedom from everything else. But if they get the freedom, all the freedom in the world, and if they do not get freedom from shit, what is the use? So this is what is happening in Kashmir. So we should take a. It should be our mission, and it's not only that you convey the message of Allah to the non-Muslims, but it's also very important. We need to convey the message of Islam to the Muslim, the correct Islam. You know, and I repeat, the Islam. See, I have only two years into this religion. It's been only one year that I have that I have been practicing it uh, as it should be practiced. You know, but uh, Alhamdulillah, this is what I know. Alhamdulillah, Allah has guided me in this. So you practice your religion not because you belong to a mother, but you because you call yourself a. You know, humbly, or you call yourself a, a Hanafi or something like that. You follow your religion because you call yourself a Muslim, and you follow your religion not because you follow Imam Abu Hanifa and Mr. Lale. You follow your religion because you obey and you know follow your religion according to how Muhammad was to Imam Abu Hanifa and what is religion, and how the you know the the righteous companions understood. Uh, his religion and and you know did and and did I mean I'm sorry understood and practiced their religion and of course the great imams may Allah may Allah be pleased with them uh, you know follow them so whatever the, whatever you know uh, confirms with the Quran and the Hadith you know all the four imams they said that if any of our if any of our ruling goes against Allah and His Rasul, then throw our rulings out. Our Imam Abu Hanifa and Mr. Lal have said that you know throw my my views against the wall. I don't you know when you find a view that is according to Quran and Sunnah, which is a Sahih Hadith, you throw my view out. You throw my view against the wall. And how do you find people in India? I said that why why are you doing this? He said I know it's there in the Hadith, but uh, it's not there in my Bible. I said, but your Imam uh, said that you know if you find anything that is against, uh, you know my mother said my mother says against. I mean my school of thought says something else. I said, you know what your school of thought says is contradicting with Quran and Sahih Hadith. And your Imam said that you know if you find something you throw it against the wall. Then why are you doing it? I found my poor father is doing it. Can you imagine this? You know who I am. I am Muslim for so many years. My father was Muslim. My grandfather was Muslim. My grandfather was Muslim, and we have been Muslim all throughout. You know how can come from? You know they take back the family tree or word normal with the Lord Allah Allah. You know asking from where did this thing arise from? You don't have an answer. But you just believe. You just hold on. You have this deep fear. You know this sense of belonging. You hold on. To what your forefathers believe, to have a lot. You know, you give them the hadith, you give them the truth from the Quran. They don't want to follow it. So you have to look into. Uh, this is what I want to tell all you brothers. You know, you all look into your belief. Look into your friends' belief. Ask them what is your idea. Your idea is that your person may be having some idea which is wrong. Not many of us question our idea. Idea, you know. So you ask them. So what do you think about Allah? What do you think about Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because all these things do not come out, uh, you know, openly sometimes. You know, we don't care to ask people. So we should care about asking people uh, about their idea. And if you find something wrong, I mean, the Quran and Hadith, you tell him. If he's a best friend, whoever, your father, 
anybody who may be the biggest alim who thinks against Quran and Hadith, if you get the opportunity to read it, to tell it. This is the Quran and Hadith. If you think and uh, you know you can you know, this is what is contradicted and this is wrong. You know? So this is what we should do and we should always say that Allah Sunnah when he guides us to the right path and you know be not divided amongst our religion and you know hold on to the rope of Allah and uh, do not be divided into sects in Islam. So this is the problem that is facing us and inshaAllah if this is the problem that is facing people in Kashmir, you know they are fighting for the rule of Allah, they are not fighting for that and that's why they are in such a mess right now and I can say that for the people in Palestine you know, I don't think Hamas has never spoken about establishing the Sharia and neither has Fatah and I don't know about the other groups over there but these are the main groups the Palestinian Authority and Hamas they have never spoken about establishing Sharia I don't know I think from what I know they have it if anybody and as a different view, uh, they can tell me. But as far as I know, they have never spoken about establishing Sharia once they get independent from Israel or occupied, you know, they get by the occupied territories back. So if you do not aim for that, how is Allah going to help you? You know, Allah is not going to have, you know, Allah is very merciful. You know, we, we, you know, they were saying a crime, they think so many of our children are dying and all that. But what are they dying for? What are, I ask you people, what are your children dying for? What are your youth dying for? What are your brothers, sisters, mothers, old people dying for? What? What are you fighting for? Huh? So that you'll have a constitution, you could, a human-made constitution drafted by the UN and supported by the US and Israel? You know? For what? Are you fighting for the rule of Allah and his Sharia? If you're not fighting for that, why is Allah going to be merciful and why is He going to give you victory if you are not fighting for Him? Why are you fighting Him? If you are not fighting for Allah, if you are not fighting to establish His deen, then why are you fighting? And what are you fighting for? And why are you asking Allah for victory? When you are saying that if I get victory, I am not going to follow what you have said, told me to follow. And I am not going to, uh, you know, establish your deen on the, on, on my, on the land which you have given me victory over. Then why is Allah going to help you? So what? It's logical, man. You all say, oh, these people are suffering so much. It's very logical. They're suffering. They're not fighting for what, you know. I'm not saying the Palestinian people, alhamdulillah, they will be, and I know there are people who are really fighting for the rule of Allah. But I'm talking about the political parties who are representing them. What are they fighting for? You know, and that's why they're not getting the victory. You decide for the cause of Allah. You decide only for the cause of Allah. You decide only to establish his gene on this uh, if you want to follow the religion of Allah according to Muhammad Rasulullah, how he taught his companions and how his companions practice his religion and not according to how, you know, a mother teaches the religion and you are only bound by the mother and you go against the habit of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, you do all these things and you expect Allah to help you? Why? So what? I do not understand why. You know, that's why you are not being helped. Don't cry. That you know, Muslim men persecuted the whole world over, and you know, look at our state. We are all responsible for the state. We follow the deal properly, and you know, we are the shining light of the whole world. You don't follow the deal, you get separated into all sects, and you know what it does? It destroys you. As simple as that. So, brothers and sisters, this was a short talk about the condition of Muslims in India, how Hindus and how other people look at Muslims. Why? Did Muslims, after ruling India for a thousand years, you know, lose their, uh, what is say, hold over India? And we as Muslims in India today are fighting for 4% res reservation and 1% reservation in the government jobs and the education and jobs in, you know, the other sectors of India. We are the most downtrodden uh, community in the whole of India from being the rulers of India for a thousand years to being the most downtrodden community in the whole of India and begging for 4% reservation and 1% reservation. Why did this happen? I have mentioned it. What can we do to reverse that? That also I have mentioned it. Then I talked about what is happening in Kashmir, the whole history of Kashmir, what is the point of view of the Indians, what is the point of view of the Pakistanis, why is there so much of fighting over there and why the people of Kashmir are not getting the victory of Allah? Why the Palestinians, in a short, I just explain why Palestinians are, in fact, 
all the areas of the world where people are fighting in so called jihad for in the name of Allah to establish you know uh, you know in the name of Islam people are fighting but they do not want to establish the Sharia so I have touched and why they are not getting the victory of Allah and I have also touched upon the topic as to how we should correct our deen how we should follow, what we should follow you know we should not be divided, we should be one not with our words but with our belief I cannot say I and Benam are one you know I love you Benam you know you are my brother in religion I and you are one but my belief and your belief is not one that means I and you are not one my belief and your belief is not one my belief and your belief is not according to Muhammad Rasulullah and how the righteous companions understood the, the teachings of Muhammad Rasulullah then we are not one Wallah we are not one we can only say with our mouth we are one but unless and until my belief and your belief and my belief and your belief does not become like the belief of Muhammad Rasulullah and his righteous companions how they understood and believed then Wallah we are not one we can never be one we can never be one so it is we have to look introspect and learn from the scholars you know about being one and following the right path and that's how inshallah we will be one and inshallah that's how we will rule the world inshallah so brothers and sisters this was my short talk on this topic I hope I have not bored all you people and all people are not gone to sleep uh, if at all you all have any questions or criticism um, or any thing you all are more than happy I mean you all are more than uh, you know, uh, you all can uh, just, just send me, write to me and uh, I'll reply inshallah and uh, if, if there is somebody who wants to add in something or speak something more about this or something else uh, I would love to pass on the mic to him uh, so I'm waiting for you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi